Good morning and welcome back to Real Estate Economics webinar series covering the state of Texas. Uh, this is part 404. Make sure you see all four parts if, if you're interested. This particular section will address interest rates, materials prices, uh, some supply chain factors and issues, and present a couple of conclusions to this market. First, let's address interest rates. As you can see, this chart dates back to 1990. Um, before the recession hit, you can see rates were approximately 6% in 2008. During the time period from 1990 to 2008, it became uh, much more cost efficient to get a mortgage. Uh, the, the mortgage origination industry drastically improved its efficiency and drastically improved its ability to get mortgage money into the hands of borrowers, which uh, led to many efficiencies, one of them being lower rates over the, over the whole time period. Um, countrywide and that sort of thing aside, uh, mortgage money was more widely available uh, through the early 2000s, um, before subprime even came along. By the time you get to 2008, we're beginning to see the recession take hold and the credit crunch, and that drop from 2008 of 6% to 2009 at 5%. We addressed in the last section is really the um, one of the drivers behind suddenly improved supportable median home values in every market across the nation. In every market we work in, the same household income could now support much higher uh, home prices uh, at a 5% rate than they could at a 6% rate. This is simple logic. In many cases, the market's not recognizing it or is not acting on it because there's a recession and employment conditions are poor, but really uh, supportable values are fairly decent if you've got a house or can refinance a current house that you have some equity in. Rates have never been lower. In fact, um, on the mortgage pricing market, if you look at the Mortgage Bankers Association site, uh, mortgage money hit all-time lows this past week. Um, it's hard to envision a scenario, a good scenario at least, where these rates uh, stay this low for very long. So we'd encourage you refinancers and anyone really in the market. Uh, now is a great time on the interest rate front. Uh, there's a lot of other factors obviously that go into the purchase decision, but, but rates have just really never been friendlier. Unfortunately, we can somewhat thank our friends in Europe and uh, across the world for some of the um, news and turmoil that's keeping rates low. A lot of that news is driving capital to the U.S. and keeping our rates rates down for now. If you, those of you who follow rates and look at the 10-year interest rates, that sort of thing, those numbers are very, very low right now. And we'd anticipate even a little bit of good news is going to drive those numbers back in the other direction. That still puts a fairly favorable interest rate environment on the ground for mortgages through 2010 into 2011, and over the time, uh, over the forecast, we'd expect rates to increase uh, uh, slowly initially and accelerating over the out years, uh, pretty much all um, tied to the ability of the world uh, and the world economy to catch his feet and show some economic growth and get through these uh, budget and deficit problems. We like to look at materials prices, uh, particularly the ones that correlate very well with housing, lumbers, my particular favorite. Um, we can look at some other things, copper, and there's different, obviously many different components that go into a home, but none of them seem to correlate quite as well as lumber. Uh, this chart is for 2 by 4 framing lumber. Um, bought and sold every day at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The contract size is 110,000 board feet. At the right, you can see the pricing scale. At the top is 340. That's $340 per thousand board feet. Uh, this chart goes back, well, I guess it's about nine months. This is the July contract, so um, every little monthly contract tends to have its own, I don't know, unique features and characteristics. I think what we'd like to talk to in this graph is the price chart at the top. We saw a gradual steady improvement from the credit crunch and the 
the big stock market crash, that sort of thing. Once the market started to get the sense that there was even you know, a tiny bit of stability for new homes, um, the lumber market started to ratchet back up. Now, obviously, there's still concern over foreclosed units, but there's many, many markets we operate in where the foreclosed units don't compete that effectively with new homes. Uh, think of it this way, if you're going into an existing neighborhood, you don't know the financial conditions of your neighbors. You could have 5, 10, 20, 30 percent of those people at their limits, at their financial limits, and they're going to get flushed out in the next three to six months. Uh, presumably you don't have that in a new neighborhood. Everyone's just qualified for a loan using at least uh, current underwriting standards, and hopefully everyone's positioned to stay for a few years. So we still observe in almost every market we work in a decent to significant premium for new homes uh, compared to the existing resale inventory. Um, we've seen quite a trend down in this lumber market in the last month. Uh, part of that is the market recognizing the tax credits co are coming to an end. You have to close that unit by June. and uh, that tax credit has tended to draw demand forward, so we're probably looking at a couple of soft months going forward in terms of home sales that uh, translate back into lumber prices. Here's copper. Copper's you know got many many industrial uses, most of them not related to housing, but uh, copper's the one commodity that's said to have a PhD in economics, tends to mirror economic conditions quite well. This market's become somewhat difficult by demand in China. This contract is 25,000 pounds. The price scale is dollars per pound, so we're just cracking through the three dollars a pound number on the July contract. Really, again, a market that's anticipating some economic weakness in the coming uh, weeks and months ahead. Um, we like to look at the supply chain on another angle. This is Louisiana Pacific Corporation. They are a provider of engineered wood, wood products, oriented strand boards, subfloors, that sort of thing. They had a big run up, as you can see in the top right of the chart, anticipating a robust housing recovery, and that seems to be dissipating. We've given that whole entire price action back on this chart, but it looks like we're setting up for a little bit of a bottom here. Um, as the good news came out of the market quite quickly in response to Europe. Now we'll just have to see how this plays out over a couple of weeks. Um, we'd like to talk to some conclusions here for Texas. Employment has been good in Texas, and this market enjoys good demographic demand from a variety of price ages or um, uh, age groups, and we'll also have a lot of demand here from mature buyers and retirement buyers. This is a market area where people will flock for uh, reasonably good weather, good financial conditions, affordable housing. It's got a lot of things going for it in terms of housing demand, and it's got a lot of things going for it in terms of retirement uh, buyers. We think a lot more demand will outlet here to the single family market. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that. Um, some of the apartments have not been well suited uh, for affordable price ranges. Many apartments don't have larger units for multi-generational households, that sort of thing. Um, this is a little overview of real estate economics. Our consulting services include site-specific and feasibility studies. We do supply and demand, and land optimization is one of our uh, specific areas where we'll tailor a precise product program to a piece of land. Uh, so that you can really optimize the present value of that land. Come to www.realestateeconomics.com and view our housing transactions report, new housing profiles, and much of the material presented here today is from our residential economic report. Here's our team. Mark Bads, the principal and founder. You can see his contact information there. I'm John Mulville. Please, if you have any questions about today's a webinar or the material presented, call me. I'm happy to discuss. At the bottom left is Judy Duell. She's in charge of subscription sales. So if you see these products and would like to apply those to your unique building situation, call Judy. And Sandy Rivera provides our customer support. If you're using our products currently, uh, Sandy can help you get the most out, out of them. Thank you for attending, and please uh, join us next week for the Inland Empire.